This week for EMN5, we're going to be talking about cardiogenic shock. And shock in general can be defined in a couple of different ways. We can think of it as MAP less than 60, a systolic blood pressure less than 90, lactate greater than 4. But the underlying theme here is that there's low organ perfusion. And we can see that a couple of different ways clinically. We can see altered mental status, maybe low urine output, the elevated lactate that we just talked about, maybe even infarct like an elevated troponin. And one way to think about shock is considering each component separately. So we have the preload, the pump, and the afterload. And cardiogenic shock specifically is a problem with the pump. And I really think it's one of the scariest because it combines two really bad problems, pulmonary edema and hypotension. And this is my nightmare patient, right? We have a patient who comes in, they're in respiratory distress, they have crackles and pulmonary edema, and your first thought is, I need to get this blood pressure down fast to reduce the afterload. But that's the whole problem. The patient's blood pressure is already low, and that's why this is scary cardiogenic shock. Now we've all managed pulmonary edema patients before. They usually have a high blood pressure, so we give them nitro and Lasix, and the whole idea is that we're reducing the afterload so that the heart can pump fluid forward and get it out of the lungs. And we've also dealt with hypotension before, whether that's from hemorrhage or sepsis, and usually what we do is give fluids and pressors, maybe blood if they need it, and that repletes the intravascular volume and resolves our shock. But with cardiogenic shock, we have both respiratory distress from pulmonary edema, and we can't reduce their afterload because they're already hypotensive. We can't give them a ton of fluids because of their pulmonary edema, and in the meantime, they have end organ damage and low perfusion, including the heart. So this is why cardiogenic shock is so tricky. Now, cardiogenic shock can be from a couple different causes. One of the most common I think we see is from an acute MI, specifically one that's right-sided, so involving infarct of the right ventricle. We can also see it in things like myocarditis or in patients with cardiomyopathy, valve insufficiency or stenosis, tamponade, and also from trauma from myocardial contusion. So the first thing in the evaluation of these patients, I think, is to get an EKG because you have a simple pathway here. If this patient's having a STEMI, they need to go to the cath lab or get thrombolysis. If they're not having a STEMI, the next best thing in my mind is to get an emergent echo, and that can really help you make some decisions and differentiate which of those things on the differential is causing the cardiogenic shock. And in the meantime, we need to be managing their blood pressure. Now, the whole goal of blood pressure management in cardiogenic shock is to perfuse the coronaries. So our goal map here is going to be greater than 65. And we can do that a couple different ways with fluids, blood pressure support, and inotropes. Now, despite these patients' pulmonary edema, they might actually be intravascularly dry, meaning the first thing you should probably do is giving a small fluid bolus trial or maybe a passive leg raise to assess their fluid status. The next step is to support their blood pressure through pressors, so dopamine and norepinephrine are probably your first-line agents. And lastly, we have the inotropes, dobutamine and milrinone, and the tricky part with these is that they can actually lower the blood pressure, but they work really nicely in that they have a direct increase on pump function. So to get around that, here's one way we can think about it. If you have a patient in cardiogenic shock who's showing signs of hypoperfusion, the next thing to do is assess how bad is their blood pressure really. If their systolic blood pressure is greater than 90, maybe just go ahead and try that inotrope first. For example, trying some dobutamine. But if the blood pressure is really low, they might need some pressors first. For example, I would start some norepinephrine. Wait for that blood pressure to come up a little bit and then go ahead and add your inotropes. Two other things you can do is optimizing the oxygenation, so maybe intubate or use BiPAP. This decreases the workload from the patient, and it also pushes all that fluid out of the lungs to decrease the pulmonary edema and get it into their vasculature instead. The second thing we can do is optimize their O2 carrying capacity. So for example, if they're anemic, make sure you give blood. So to recap, cardiogenic shock is a problem with the pump, and these can be really tricky patients to manage because they have both pulmonary edema and hypotension. So the first thing I would say to do is assess your patient with an EKG and an early cardiac echo to help you decide what the problem is. You can try a small fluid bolus or maybe a straight leg raise to see if the patient responds or is intravascularly dry, and then consider pressors or inotropes for a goal map of greater than 65. That's it for cardiogenic shock, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.